Hi there, YouTube. So I managed to get my hands on a hot water kettle just so I can have the convenience of heating up some hot water for my tea. And um, yeah, so I wanted to test this out real quickly. I've already cleaned it. Um, and it says for the minimum that you should put in is two cups. I'm going to go ahead and do that now. And let's see here. Let's hope I don't make a huge freaking mess. How should I pour it like this? I'll go ahead and clean that up. And there we go. Lovely. I'm excited. Okay, so I guess all you do is press that and you wait till it boils. So. I'll come back when it's boiling. So right off the bat, it's actually very loud. <laughs> but I will say if you want it to boil and heat up quicker, you just put warm water and make sure the water is already warm. So like if you're gonna do it from the top, if not, just, I don't know, warm, just put it in, no big deal. Um, and then I guess it automatically stops when the water is to a full boil which is pretty awesome. <laughs> it's so weird. It's like, I don't know, that's weird. I find this weird. <laughs> this reminds me of when I worked at a bed and breakfast. There was a um, water heater just like this, a water kettle. Oh, that's, that's more. Don't mind my nails. I'm actually going to get them done on Monday. So I'll have my birthday nails. And yeah, as you can hear, it is about to stop. This is actually really fucking awesome. Can I just say, I'm making my sweet and spicy caffeine-free tea. Yeah, no, I love this. This is awesome. I was gonna do it on top of my mini fridge, but I didn't know if that would like affect the fridge somehow. Oh my god! It sounds kind of like... I don't know what. Oh, that's beautiful. Well, I'd say that's, um... Perfect. <laughs> and it turns off by itself. So, I'm excited. I'm also going to be trying this Spun Premium Honey for the first time. I am excited! This is, like, I don't know why I get such a kick out of this. <laughs> Maybe because I'm not sitting at the stove just waiting for it to boil. This is what the honey looks like. You really want to make sure that your honey is sourced, like, from, it's not, like, disgusting, if that makes sense. Okay, well, damn. This is so legit. I am excited. Oh, please don't fall. Perfect. Yep, this is awesome. Whoa, that's awesome. I just realized I don't, I should not have put the spoon in. Hang on, oh, hang on one second. Give me one. Okay, I just wanted to dry off the spoon before sticking it in the honey. This looks beautiful. You can just tell a difference between honey that is disgusting <laughs> that has been extremely over processed versus this beautiful honey i'm gonna go ahead and use that and let's close that up and get into this video hi there youtube it is i the one the only nadia exotica and hello <laughs> I've made my tea. I used the um, hot water electric kettle and I'm just honestly excited to try it with that honey. Like seriously, just, oh my goodness. But I need it to cool off. This is honestly like really, really hot. I don't think I ever boil the water like this, like while it's on the stove. As soon as it comes to a boil, I um, immediately pour it into the tea. I don't ever like, I don't know. It's really, it seems, extra extra hot 
have this beautiful candle going. I didn't want to get it too close to my camera, phone, whatever. And I also wanted to light some incense. This is musk that I've shown in my incense haul. Um, it's just phenomenal. If you're not someone who likes muskier scents, like um, the way, the best way I describe it is like, kind of like old women perfume. <laughs> if you don't like that, you will not like musk. <laughs> Um, and I'm going to light it here in this. I also wanted to, eventually I'm going to make a video about, like, a whole video on incense. Um, I have an ingredient that I really, really need to get my hands on in order to do the video, and it's shipping all the way from Canada, so it's going to take a while. Um, I believe she said 14 days, possibly even longer if customs holds it up. Anyway, anyway, anyway. Um... Yes, so I do plan on doing a video on incense as well. Um, what I wanted to do with this, how I like to do it is not only, I'm, I'm going to get into it. It's going to be a whole video, but um, like buying incense is great. However, there has been times where I've made my own and I have yet to perfect the perfect ratio of the certain powder that you're supposed to use that ignites the incense perfectly and then all the ingredients that you use in the incense, if that makes sense, in the incense cones, um, loose incense, whatever, um, to, to get it to burn properly. So, um, with that being said, I'm just going to, this would work even better if you had like a torch lighter. I have one, but it's in the other room. Um, and you can literally just set the incense down. Let me just do this like this. I just remembered I have the window open. You can set the incense down and just torch it and it will burn a lot better and you don't risk burning yourself. So what I really love to do, if you're not going to, um, if you're not going to craft incense yourself you can take certain fragrance oils. This one is liquid amber. It's in a tiny little bottle. And you can also incorporate, or no, that's not the right word. You can also accompany your incense with some fragrance oil. You don't wanna to use too, too much, just a smidge. And it creates a lovely scent and smoky effect too. There we go. Oh, that smells gorgeous. Okay. So that's a whole other video I plan on. I've already spent four minutes anyway. Okay. So that's not what this video is about. So, okay. So, so I, this may not seem like a huge deal to some, to me, it is a, it's, it's so awesome. I don't know why. I just, I think it's so fucking dope. I submitted seven because I know in my previous video, I said I had six, but I created another song, um, probably like the day after that in order to do my poem video. Um, I created a whole other song. So I in total submitted seven songs to be copyrighted. Um, and I just kind of wanted to talk a bit about that and maybe talk about my music background. Um, and yeah, so I just kind of wanted to go through the, um, steps, I guess, to, for getting your music copyrighted. Um, it's really not as complex as people make it out to be. Honestly, you just follow all the steps, you know, um, that are on each page. And it literally explains to you, it couldn't be any more thorough. It explains to you how to do it properly, what to submit properly. Be very, very, very specific down to every last detail on your information. You know, okay, so music when you do like a song on audacity or fl studio or 
even just, I think in your regular, if you use Windows, it includes metadata. So what that means is you can embed certain data from, you know, about your song, from when, when it was crafted, um, who's on it, who's featured on it, the type, the genre of music, um, album name, uh, the copyright, um, I don't know if it's copyright, like code or whatever. You, you, you can input this metadata. Sorry, I just don't, the, like, the way that this is right now, I'm like not okay with that. Okay. You can input this metadata and embed it into your music. So in your tracks, um, so with that being said, it just requires you when you submit it to the copyright, oh goodness, oh goodness, I don't know off the top of my head what the website is called that you have to do that. The, oh God, what was it? Like eco.gov slash copy, I don't even know, something. You have to go on a certain website, maybe I'll link it down below even. Um, when you do that, you have to be extremely thorough with each track. So make sure that the metadata and even the file name matches up with what you're um, sending in. You also have to be extremely careful and make sure that you're not filing a sound recording and instead you're filing a work of art, a performance work of art. So that includes the composition of the song, the lyrics, the instruments, everything. It includes literally every, like, the bread and butter of it all. Um, you have to make sure that that is the route you're going and you don't accidentally submit a sound recording to get copyrighted instead. Because if you do submit it, a song as um, a sound recording, it only copyrights the composition of the music, if I'm not mistaken, if there's any lyrics on it. Um, you, that does not that does not include any lyrics or anything. What if you if you were to submit it as a sound recording? There's a bunch of options. I just it's literally so thorough and in depth on each page. It tells you step by step how to do it. Right. So um, from what I have been researching on Google, because I didn't want to submit anything until I knew, like, okay, this that and the third. Like this is what I want. These are the names of the songs you know, this is how long this track is. You know, I didn't want to submit it until I knew every single thing, you know, down to the very last detail. Um, so I had just been Googling and kind of watching YouTube videos on, this is still very hot, on how to do it. I researched on Google how much it would, like, was estimated to cost. Um, and I'm going to give you the exact amount that I spent for seven tracks. I had seven tracks, um, submitted and in total it was $85 even no change nothing 85 bucks to copyright submit um to submit seven tracks to get copyrighted um which I don't think is terrible that's really not bad at all so um yes and you can copyright up to 10 songs in a row however they can't it can't be oh gosh I'm really really paraphrasing it can't be a, if it's a whole album, they each have to have, oh God, if it's a whole album of them or a collection, it can't be all, um, each one has to be specific to what it is. Each song, the song name, the file name, the file name has to have the song name .mp3 to be able to be submitted into the, um, the website. So, um, it would be really helpful if I could just see what, um, what the website is. Like, I wish I could remember it's in my phone. It's in my email. I got the email confirmation. It was honestly very, very easy. So the steps are as follows. First, you list each of the tracks names, um, up to 10 songs, like I said, then it will show you another page and you have to sign all the, the legalities of it. So basically your name, um, your address and all the stuff. And it also says that if you are going to sign or if you are going to submit the songs or any work really um, under a pseudoname, you absolutely must file under that pseudoname. However, when it comes to billing and it comes to contact information, you are free to put um, your legal name, but it's, I guess if you were to put your legal name and not a pseudonym under, 
um, the first part, the first page of, of who you're claiming the song is by, um, your official legal name will be in that, like people will be able to look it up and see your complete legal name. So it's important to, if you're using a pseudonym, be very, very um, apparent about that. Let them know there's even a box you can check. And because obviously Exotica is not my real last name. Um, however, uh, it's important to make sure that you are um, communicative to them about that. So that's that. You do the song names. Um, I believe it's in no particular order. And I'm pretty sure, because from what I've seen, it didn't say. It just you put in your song names. Fill out all the information for the, the um, contact information, who's claiming the song, all of that. It's a whole slew of things. Then on the next page, you do the payment. Pretty self-explanatory. Um, not a big issue. And then on the following page, once your payment has been accepted, you do the file file copies of the tracks so from your the raw file of your music from that you know you that's when you have to be very very thorough make sure that the prop you go into properties of those songs like just on your computer alone make sure all of that data is correct and then especially the genre like because that metadata basically um determines how your songs are inputted in um, iTunes, in wh whatever, no, no matter what place, like that way you know, or these websites know um, what genre the music is, if that makes sense. Um, so there's that, you make sure all of those songs are in there, the raw files of your music, and then you submit it and you get a confirmation email and it's just the most rewarding thing. I am so excited. It's not even this big, huge deal that like, oh my goodness, music, I hope I make it in this, you know, whatever. It's not like that at all for me. This is a beautiful outlet. I have found music to be an extremely beneficial outlet to let out all of my emotions. So a lot of the music that you will hear is a bit somber in some um, aspects, but also very, very beautiful. Um, in my opinion, in my humble opinion. Um, and I'm just so excited to share for the sake of sharing and it's meditation. The purpose and the intent behind it is to meditate to it, fall asleep to it even, and see what you, um, see what your mind portrays to you. Uh, I would love to hear feedback. I really want to hear feedback on kind of like what kind of like the thought provoking, uh, whatever comes up from my music alone. So I am so freaking exciting, so excited. And this marks like a whole new era. Um, it's just amazing. So a lot of my songs are mainly like ambient instrumental. There is vocals, but it's not necessarily lyrics. It's just sounds. It's, I love to describe my music as layered chaos. <laughs> it's layered chaos. It's, it's, it's just thought provoking. It, it, it's, it's channeling of inner, of not energies of, of, well, energies, but also emotions. I just love to think of it as just layered, chaotic beauty, divine beauty. Like I, I just, oh goodness. And I, I don't know, I'm just, I, this is so awesome to me um, that it will be claimed by me legally, my music, me, 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 me. I did it all by myself. I, the instruments, the piano, everything is played by me, the vocals, everything. Like, I'm just floored. <laughs> so, um, I think this is cooled down now. I also wanted to talk a little bit about my background in music because I'm no stranger to Whoa, holy. Wow, that honey, that honey is beautiful. Whoa, you can taste that. You can taste the freaking, I don't, I think it's raw honey. I don't know if it's raw honey, but I think it's, um, it's, it's organically sourced. It's really good honey. 
yeah that's lovely whoa um so <laughs> my background in music um when i was younger i remember signing up for piano lessons um this wonderful woman she was a close friend of my aunt's she um taught me in her home basically i remember the first thing i learned from her was for elise by beethoven and um i only learned i believe i only learned the one part i didn't learn the second hand the second hand part um but um she was she was wonderful that woman was wonderful she was very uh she, just a really good teacher um what else did i learn i learned a bunch of different chords and stuff from her she was very very insightful um however that didn't last too too long i got the basics of it down at that point and then i remember um encountering another woman who i'll just say her name is paula her name is paula she's a gorgeous soul super just uh, just optimistic and sweet and just caring and she is in it for the music the the she just has such a drive and passion behind teaching music. Um, we spoke about vocals. We spoke about um, just everything. And she kind of pushed that basic core fundamental knowledge that I had on piano. She pushed it to the next level and helped me advance just that much more. I'm sorry, it's getting really smoky. Um, wonderful, wonderful woman. And I remember... <laughs> I must have been about like what 12 I think I was like 12 and she helped me come up with my first track <laughs> I still have it to this day on a USB stick um, and she helped me come up with the piano behind it she even helped me record um, guitar behind it she w just had everything the all the fixings all the bells and whistles in her home she had a um like a recording studio set up and i remember the reason why i was so hell-bent on doing this song and getting it recorded and getting it on a cd which i did i still have that somewhere i just don't know where um <laughs> i i was so hell-bent on getting this copy of the song and, and completing it because i was going to use it to audition to my into my high school that I was going to the following year my freshman year of high school things were so they changed for me my freshman year of high school and one of the things was was this um program that specifically was geared towards fine arts and anything art related um and so I was auditioning for a choir for a choir class and this choir class had x amount of um, levels to it or, you know, yeah, levels just depending on your skill in singing and, and whatever else that you do. So I needed a hard copy of that track in order to audition because you have to send it to them. And I did. And I, she was just, just so awesome. She's someone who sees the beauty in people and she's someone who can just it's so tangible to her. The music and the, the passion and all of that is so tangible to Paula. And I, I'm just seriously, even now, I'm just so grateful that I had that experience. She's just lovely, a lovely woman. Um, yeah, so I ended up recording a track in her home recording studio, which was honestly really, really cool. So cool. I'm sorry. I feel like this is like, it really is getting super duper smoky. Um, so yes, so that was wonderful. Um, let's see, throughout high school, I, I didn't stay at that school, unfortunately. Um, but throughout high school, I remember just kind of just always like, I was distracted. I couldn't really um, acknowledge the fact that I was in a choir class and, and I couldn't grasp it for what it actually was, but it was amazing. And it's, it gives kids this opportunity to pursue their passions, which our adult world is so hell bent on, I'm sorry, I'm using that word a lot, but it's so just determined on deterring children and kids from pursuing their passion. Um, but this program gives kids the opportunity to really, really emerge themselves 
submerge submerge themselves in fine arts so that class was beautiful the teacher was beautiful too in that high school choir class um and i remember for my final for that class everyone had to sing a song and when i was singing that song that i sang for my when i sang my final song whatever um everyone was like whoa you know like you have that in you but why haven't you been showing that you know so <laughs> i still have that pizzazz i still have that certain thing and i feel like i portray it a lot in my meditation music sorry i feel like the lighting's looking a bit odd maybe it's the smokiness um i feel like my meditation music embodies that certain pizzazz um which is why i'm really really excited about it mm. amazing so that is like a really really brief history of that i of my music background um i did i I am self-taught on the guitar as well. My uncle was the one who um, got me inspired to learn guitar at a very, very, very young age. My first guitar ever was a Fender. Uh, it was a baby Fender and it was a red, I think I, my aunt still has it, um, a red baby Fender and this little tiny mini amp. Uh, and I thought it was the coolest thing ever. <laughs> From then on, I got a Ibanez, which is a wonderfully shaped guitar. I love the shape of the Ibanez the most. Um, and then I also got a Johnson um, guitar, and that's like a black and white, really beautiful guitar as well. And all these guitars are still stowed away in my aunt's closet. <laughs> um, and I taught myself enough to know about power chords bar chords and I, I don't know I was just very intrigued by guitar as well excuse me as well um specifically electric I did like acoustic though and my uncle he would play acoustic so I also was just I thought it was awesome that he had an acoustic so um that was also something I really enjoyed um and yeah so guitar is like the first instrument I ever picked up and then piano and piano I guess they say if you learn piano you can learn any other instrument that's like the first one you should learn is the piano um, and I kind of understand that because it all follows a certain musical language if that makes sense and yes and I will never forget the first um, guitar how-to book that I picked up was a Green Day book and it showed me barring chords and but when I say barring chords you use this this pointer finger on the guitar and then what you do is use the other two fingers either your it's usually the middle two fingers on the other two um on the other two chords chords right no on the other two strings I'll just say strings because it's been a while chords on a guitar are the grouping, if I'm not mistaken, and then chords on a piano. I don't even know. I'm just, whatever. It's been a long time for me. I haven't picked up a guitar in forever. But the barring chords, you use, the main thing is, is that you move you use this pointer finger to kind of create a bar on the neck of the guitar. And then you slide down each, d depending on where the chords are at. Um, so that was all self-taught. I learned that way. Um, yeah. And I, ever since, I, I still have a super duper big passion for music. I think it's beautiful. The music that I create specifically, I'm not, it's not a serious sort of thing per se. I'm not trying to all of a sudden have a music career. It's mainly for an outlet, like I said. It's to let go of some of the things that I feel and some of the things I've been through. It's, it's really to, you know kind of set them free um and I think it's done that but I also love to just keep like listen to it and, and meditate to it um so that's that's a brief history um now where I plan on going music wise in the future I just want to keep doing things as a therapeutic thing um 
I still have a lot of my musical equipment. I have two microphones that are um, uh, wireless, and then I have this little amp thing, or I guess, yeah, it's an amp for the microphones that plug into a regular amp, you know, like a guitar amp. Um, I still have a guitar amp, I have a keyboard, I have um, all my guitars still. Um, and I just want to keep exploring and keep working with what I have and see where it goes. You know, it's just a beautiful language. It's a beautiful expression of, of a multitude of emotions. Um, and a lot of them too are like, I just name them off of, uh, they're just so eclectic. The names of my tracks are very eclectic. I have, um, uh, um, that I've showed in my, my poetry video, uh, the Rumi poem, uh, Athenian luxury. To me, it sounds like a beautiful Greek palace <laughs> in ancient Athens. Um, let's see, I have Mermaid Serenade, which uh, the, both of the mermaid songs that I have, the mermaid theme songs are extremely raw emotions, um, that I put into those tracks mermaid serenade and then the melancholy maiden those are my two like standalone only vocals songs that don't include any piano or anything they're just purely vocals and they are truly like the essence of you know melancholy uh, um and kind of like the not so great feelings that one gets from a, a you know a a bunch of different walks of life but um so yeah so those two are extremely passionate extremely somber and morose um let's see what else do i have i have um cerulean cerulean now that is a track that is it's literally the only lyric in it is cerulean and cerulean is this beautiful shade of blue. <laughs> um, and to me, when I, when I started singing it and I started those certain tones that were in that song, I just thought of like water caves, like beautiful blue water caves lit up by the sunlight and just, just beautiful um, clusters of, of cerulean. Uh, and... I don't know. I just immediately start thinking of that and it's beautiful and it's very spiritual and it connects to the element of water. Um, and again, very emotional. And I have a few other ones in that list. Uh, Dusk and Donam, Dom, Dusk and Damantur. I have, um, Jericho de Kerr. I have, um, what else? What else? What else? Uh, I believe it's Daylight Sky. That's just a nice ambient background instrumental kind of thing with bird sounds. Um, and I think that's that. Uh, Jericho to Cure, Dusk and Dawn on Her, um, Daylight Sky, Melancholy Maiden, uh, 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 Mermaid Serenade, um, Athenian Luxury. I'm missing another one. I'm missing another one. Oh no. What is it? What is it? What is it? It will come to me. I know it will. Goodness, I should, should I get my computer? Let me check on my computer really quickly. <laughs> okay, it turns out that is seven. That's all seven. Dusk and Dumb on Her, Dumb, Dumb on Her. I'm probably saying it wrong. I'm so sorry. That's terrible. It's an ancient city in um, Egypt. Um, Jericho de Kerr, which I might also be saying that word wrong. I'm very, very sorry on my pronunciation. Um, Melancholy Maiden, Mermaid Serenade, Daylight Sky, Cerulean, and Athen uh, Athenian Luxury. Okay, yeah, that is the seven songs that I have, and I can't wait to, to come up with art for the songs. I'm so stoked. I have like a very good idea of what I want to do for that. And yeah, that's what I wanted to share in this video. So there's lots more to come. If 
you have any questions, comments, or, or anything, leave them down below. Um, you can also email me at NadiaExotica at gmail.com. All of my links are down below and or you can go to NadiaExotica.com. Um, I'm just stoked. This is the beginning of a new era for the Nadia Exotica world. And thank you so much for accompanying me, accompanying me on this. And I promise you will be hearing from me soon. Thank you so, so much for watching.